Hello guys, my name is Joan and welcome to my YouTube channel where I share home decor and DIY videos. This is the last video that leads up to my parents' room makeover. What that means is in two weeks, you'll be seeing the whole room makeover, not just small corners and snippets. But while you wait in anticipation, I have this video for you today where I take you on a journey with me to make this floating TV shelf. One day while I was scrolling through Pinterest as I do, I came across this shelf and I thought, you know, this is, this is kind of cute, but $300 though? Mm. I wasn't ready for that. This is actually the same plan that I used for my sister's floating nightstand, but I just tweaked the formula a little bit to accommodate the TV. Special shout out to Lily Ben Coyle for requesting to see the nightstand video. And this is essentially it with a little tweaks. Now, before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe and turn on your bell notification so you get notified every time I post. Also, find me on Instagram for smaller unseen DIYs. Let's get started! Step one was getting my wood cut. I went to Home Depot and picked up two 1x10x8 foot long pieces of pine. Over there, I had it cut to 70 inches, which was what I wanted the full length of my TV shelf to be. Since they didn't do cuts less than 12 inches, I had to go home and do the vertical cuts to 6.5 inches myself. As you can see here, I drew some arrows that are facing the top. Here's where the top of the shelf will be. And I wrote this on the back so I know that this part will be the back of the whole shelf. So what I'm going to do is on top of each of these, I'm going to drill two pocket holes right here so that this middle part can be screwed into the top. Keep in mind that you have your outer pieces, one and two, and your inner pieces that are these two. So when you're making the pocket holes for this one, you have to pay special attention to make sure that it's on this inner corner here. So what I can do is put an extra arrow so that the hole that I have to screw must be facing this way and must be on this side. For the inner one, it doesn't really matter too much. For now, I'll just put that in to represent that these are inner pieces. And on this last bottom piece here, we put an arrow. Let me give you a quick tutorial on how to use a Craig jig. First, you have this piece that lets you measure the depth of your wood. One by wood is actually three quarters of an inch thick. So we will set all parts of this jig to three quarters of an inch. That includes this piece with the sliding gray thing and the drill bit that comes in the pack. Once all of those parts are set to the correct depth, you clamp down the assembly, then drill your pocket holes in. I did this for all the vertical pieces and included a pocket hole towards the back of the shelf, which is how this thing will be mounted to the wall. Looking back on it now, I would recommend having two mounting pocket holes for extra support. When done, I screwed the vertical pieces into the top piece with one and a quarter inch pocket screws. Now it's time to dry fit the rest. I put the bottom piece on what we had already assembled and drilled slim pilot holes through the bottom into the vertical pieces. I then used two inch screws to fully secure the bottom piece into the vertical pieces. With our dry fit done, I'll take everything apart for sanding. I've been sanding for a while. <laughs> I'm tired. So we're just gonna move on, cause I'm tired. After all the sanding, I went in with an early American stain by Verithane. I chose not to use a wood conditioner because I wanted the imperfect blotchy look, but feel free to use it if you want to, Yogi's choice. Mm -hmm. 
After staining, I rejoined the top and the vertical pieces, being sure to add some glue to the joints for better adhesion. I then did three coats of oil based poly. Good morning. It's a new day. <laughs> I totally forgot to add in a hole at the top of the D stand thing, so I'm going to do that now. Sorry. Don't do what I'm doing in this video. I made two errors. The first one was, be sure you put in your hole before you even sand and stain this. Also, I am using a drill bit that was way too small for the plugs that I want to put through it. So what you do want to do is get a regular drill bit and make about four corner holes and then use a jigsaw to fully cut that out. Then you have a rectangle. The other option is to use one of these hole saw attachments to make a circular cut out. Just make sure that your plugs will fit through them. Do, however, use the green tape to protect the perimeter of your cutout so that you get a good clean cut. Also, make sure that you make the holes through the top and the bottom so you can thread your plugs in seamlessly. With all three coats of poly done, I put the bottom piece on and it was time to mount this to the wall. I first found the wall studs with a stud finder and drilled straight into them through the pocket holes we made. For the parts without a stud behind them, I used the wall anchor and drilled straight into that. With a little bit of styling, here's how our TV shelf looks. I would include some cord covers here and paint it to match the room color so everything looks seamless. Thank you so much for joining my journey to make this shelf for my parents. I will see you in two weeks time for the full room makeover. But till then, you can watch this video or any other video of mine that you haven't seen. Bye!